Good morning, folks. If you didn't catch last night's video, it is linked for you right below this video. Spectacular solar eruptions. Two M flares, an M3 and M4. First one was the only CME producer, as the second one was impulsive and the solar flaring uptick continues. The CME was massive, but only the unfolding portion is moving quickly. Most of the burst is at regular CME speed, but the very edge that's straightening out as it releases is moving quite quickly. Anyway, that was last night. This morning, two mid-range M flares became two mid-range and one high M class flare. Early this morning, an M8 solar flare erupted from that same region turning away. A much smaller CME can be seen leaving the sun here. The sunspot group is now gone over the limb, leaving us eyeing some thin dark plasma filaments incoming to the left because that's about all there is to erupt. The sunspots are not impressive except for one that is departing the earth-facing side now. Nothing good coming in either. Earth-facing quiet continues through the flare uptick. Three days of solar wind show those peaks from yesterday waning back down now. The electrons can finally get back up off the floor. Earth's system is not fluctuating its energy as much and the magnetic storm is over for this space weather event. But just as one stream ends and a coronal hole exits on the south, here comes the next one on the north. This hole is positively charged, already switched near Earth IMF from negative to positive, and perhaps most importantly, it's got major force at the coronal hole core. It's about as powerful as we get. Now while we wait for it to face Earth, it's only small swarms taking our attention. This one takes the cake in Chile the last day. The volcano going on alert is icing on that cake. A true uptick is on our doorstep the next few days due to the coronal hole. Meanwhile, it's going to be hard for us to focus on anything but Ceres. In three days, Dawn will reach orbit and deliver the best images of this sphere ever, and hopefully reveal the identity of those bright spots. I'd like to recommend a Washington Post article that did a terrific job breaking down February. Coldest month ever for some areas, worst winter ever for other areas, snow, cold, but record heat out west. Many cities out there went the exact opposite direction. But the real story is in fact the cold, which doesn't seem to want to go home. After shattering most snow records out east, here comes the biggest one yet, which is not funny. Before breaking down the weather, I want to announce the cities for the next leg of the Mobile Observatory project. As most of you know, my wife is going on seven months pregnant, so we're on break from the Mobile Observatory, but I'm going to head back out west and run through some areas before getting back to my best friend and boss. April 18th, I arrive in Denver and would love some help from locals, anyone in the area, in terms of getting somewhere to have an event that Saturday afternoon. Then the next day, Sunday the 19th, I'll be in San Francisco. We'll need help with that one too. Hopping over to Sacramento for the next day, and then the following weekend I'll be at PrepperCon, 24th and 25th. It's in Salt Lake City, Friday and Saturday. PrepperCon is like Comic-Con, but for preppers. I'm very excited. So again, here are the dates and cities for this run. They are not posted as official stops on the website yet because I still need your help figuring out where to go. Send us an email through observatoryproject.com. And no, this is not the end of the tour. Just a quick hit before my daughter is born. Okay, back to weather in the U.S. Center low pressure system is tempting that warm moisture to come up from the Gulf only to find it is met with outrageously cold air. There is so much moisture coming north that it is overshadowed only by the temperature, which will take flash flood potential and turn it into ice and snow over just a few hundred miles. Be careful if you are in this area today. In Europe, it's a bit of a lighter day as the convergence bows and sinks into a calmer flow while moisture still races into the center of the low area right at the UK. Down under, that convergence south of Australia indeed shifted east to New Zealand and together with the low just to its west is bringing a sweeping cloud line across the south. Make sure you catch last night's video. Send us a message if you were in Denver, the Bay Area, or Salt Lake. We need to hear from you soon. Got the current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 5.50 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.